This video introduces VMware VVols running on the VMAX 3 platform. The VMAX 3 is a natural platform for VVols with its SLO paradigm. Each SLO can represent an advertised capability to the vCenter and thus provide a specific performance range for a particular VM created on VVol storage. Let's take a look under the covers how this is accomplished. There are a number of objects that are required before a VMware user can create a VVol based VM. Some of these objects are created on the array, all through Unisphere and some on the vCenter. The first object we're creating here is the storage container. It's created on the array and is a logical construct that dictates how much storage and from what SLO the VMware user can provision. In this example, we create two storage containers for two different business units, one for finance and one for development. The finance receives diamond and silver SLOs and development receives optimized. Note the storage admin has full control over the total amount of storage. Once the storage containers are created, we now need to create what are known as the protocol endpoints, or the PE. The PE is a small device, similar to a VMAX gatekeeper, that VVOLs are bound to when they are created. Now moving over to the VMware side, even though we've presented the protocol endpoints, this is not how VMware sees the storage containers. This is done through the VASA provider. Our VASA provider is deployed as a virtual appliance, and it's what VMware communicates with to reach the array. Here you can see there's one array online, the one with the storage containers. With communication established, VMware will now see the storage containers. The containers themselves must be made available to VMware via an object, in this case a data store. So what we do here is we use the new data store wizard. We're going to choose VVOL as our type. And we'll see that the two containers we created will show up. We're going to create two data stores. We'll do one for the finance and then one for development. Note here how the capacity will reflect the capacity we created inside of Unisphere for the containers. The second object we need to create in vCenter is the VM storage profile. As our storage containers can have multiple SLOs, we need to have different profiles to ensure our VMs are created with the correct SLO. The first profile is for the diamond SLO in the finance container. The profile is based on rules that we set up. In this case, the rule is for the SLO. And you can see here the diamond SLO sees compatible storage as the finance data store. And through magic here, we'll add the other two profiles for silver and for development. Finally, we're going to create the virtual machine. Now, this is done in the usual way, except we'll choose one of the VVOL storage policies in which to create the virtual machine. So first, let's put an operating system onto the virtual machine in about 10 seconds. We'll put Ubuntu on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a directory structure. Then we're going to take a snapshot of the virtual machine. And we'll add some file. And then we'll do a restore to show how the snapshot capability works. So here with our directory creator, our empty directory, we're going to take a snapshot. Now with VVOLs, these snapshots are not VMDK files. They're actually SnapVX snapshot on the VMAX 3. So let's go back into the operating system. Let's add a file. And now we'll go and we'll do a restore back to the snapshot that was taken with the empty directory. And as you can see, it's gone. So thank you for viewing the VVOL preview on VMAX 3.